What's up guys, we're here, welcome back to the channel. So uh, this is the last video that I'm gonna do for the season seven PTR. And this is the only class build that I was really excited about in testing. And that is the new um, Akuns Catalyst uh, for Ball Lightning. Um, if you guys do not know the history of Ball Lightning, um, it has been nerfed into the ground and never came back after season two. Uh, we've had five seasons of Ball Lightning doing absolutely nothing in the meta to affect the meta or even be playable for that matter. But they did, the devs decided to make a few Ball Lightning um, focuses here. There's this one and another one to directly compete with one another. And this is definitely the one I settled on because part of the power makes ball lightnings orbit around you because they changed how the gravitational orbs actually work so i was really excited to test this out and kind of try this um i don't even care about dying right here but uh yeah so we are going to kind of showcase this ball lightning build that we put together um with all the powers so again we're going to go through and do the gear skills and just a little bit of a showcase we're not doing anything crazy i'm just going to show off the build um and then i have a few options here to kind of swap out so uh, I have no mercenaries with me because you don't need them uh, at all for this build. And plus, it's the PTR, and um, you don't just get them. You have to actually go redo the quests. I'm not sure why that's a, a thing, but yeah, I'm not doing the quests again. Um, but yeah, let's go into the skills. Uh, we got Arc Lash here, uh, one to two points, just to get to here. We're not running a basic skill at all. Um, we are going to come down and take points into charge bolts, okay? So when we pop our ultimate with unstable currents, this is going to allow us to go ahead and use this shock skill, which will be super duper strong and do a lot of damage. Super cool. We are taking points in elemental dominance, so they do more damage when uh, cast above 50 mana, which shouldn't be a problem ever. We have one point into flame shield just for a defensive skill to be immune. We got points into teleport as normal into shimmering for damage reduction. Uh, we max out glass cannon for more damage. We do do ice armor into shimmering ice armor, not only for the mana regeneration, but as well as the cooldown, because we are going to be spending a lot of mana. Next, of course, pretty much in every single build, um, even with all the, the changes, ice blaze is still super important for sorceresses uh, with the cooldown that it provides, which is really nice. We are maxing out mana shield. Um, however, I do want to kind of swap this and put... Uh, primordial binding as the max so we will have mana shield here just for damage reduction but primordial binding is going to be re uh, really nice this one was the change this used to be conjuration mastery but they changed it so now each conjuration that you have gives you summon damage so it won't affect this build at all um, but the five percent movement and more importantly the mana regeneration is really nice um, we get a stacking bonus up to 10. Next, we're grabbing a lot of the elements just to get to protection for even more um, barrier, which is important. Then we are taking familiar into roaring familiar. The reason that we're doing this is because you have a few different ways to play this build. I'm not the biggest fan of using teleport here, but it does work with the um, raiment of the infinite that we're doing um, just to be a little bit more speedier. But outside of that, this is going to be really nice because we use it in our enchantment slot. Um, and it's going to make each time we summon a conjuration, which right now our conjuration summon is going to be ice blades. So every time we do that, um, every time we summon a conjuration that isn't a familiar, we have a 25% chance to summon a familiar of the same element, which will just give us ice blades. However, in the skill bar, um, your familiar's elements now follow a cycle through fire, cold, and lightning when you cast any skill. So when you have at least two different familiars, you gain damage reduction, which is really nice. The damage reduction is cool, but this is more important just to have the different familiars. So it's totally up to you. Um, next, we're going to come down. They did change all of this because Sorceresses got a huge damage loss with uh, Devouring Blaze being completely changed, which is a real bummer. Um, I, I honestly don't know what they're doing over there. But uh, Inner Flames, increased damage to healthy enemies. We're always going to take that. Um, then we have Invigorating Conduit because we this is a very mana-hungry build and we're going to need mana. So we're going to be trying to pick up as many um, Crackling Energies as we can. Of course, we are doing Maxing Out Ball Lightning. This got changed a little bit. So uh, we got enhanced, so our attack speed increases um, each time up to 20% for Ball Lightning. So we took Wizards here. The wizard Casting Ball Lightning forms two Crackling Energies, which combined with Invigorating Conduit will keep our mana 
pretty high. We should never run out. Although, until you can kind of figure out and solve mana, um, Mages is just better for the 30% incre increased damage, but right now we don't need it. Uh, next, we're going to come down. Um, not only is Inner Flames always going to be in every single Sorceress build, no matter what. Don't argue with me in the comments. Um, this is the other skill that's going to be in every single Sorceress build, no matter what. We're going past Permafrost into Icy Touch because we're dealing 11% multiplicative increased damage to any vulnerable enemy. They changed how that one works. Super easy. Next, we're grabbing Evocation for cooldown. Um, then we're doing Elemental Synergies. Your Frost Shock and Pyromancy skills deal increased damage for each skill you have equipped on the bar of that type. So, our Shock skills, we have one, two, three. So, we get a nice, juicy 6% increased damage. Very cool. Then, of course, we got Unstable Currents to pop everything and increase attack speed. And then we're taking uh, Coursing Currents for the crit chance, but more importantly, Intellectrocution for less damage. And then, I truly believe, looking at everything, that this is going to be the passive skill that we will forever run. It used to be Veers, but now it's been surpassed by Enlightenment. Casting any skill, no matter what, gives you one stack of Enlightenment or grants 15 if the previous skill was of a different element. After getting 100, you become Enlightened and no longer can gain stacks, so you lose 10 stacks per second. However, when you are Enlightened, your bonus damage with Fire, Lightning, and Cold are equal to them combined, and you gain 25x damage, 45% plus mana regen, and 20% plus attack speed. There's no other key passive here that even touches this. Don't argue with me in the comments. Uh, let's go to gear. Let's go over to gear. So uh, first we're going to start with the pieces, and then we'll then we'll go transition over to the other stuff. So we got uh, we got gloves here for gravitational. They changed how this works. Gravitational used to be the power that makes the ball lightnings orbit around you, but they put that into the unique. So now gravitational says after creating two ball lightnings, your next one implodes, pulling in surrounding enemies before and dealing damage, which is really nice, which is probably why we won't keep this aura in on here, but it's just kind of nice. I kind of want to just put in the one that gives me the attack speed here or the movement speed and Chris strike chance. Um, instead of this one and just make sure I have three more Eldritch Rich powers. So I may look at that, but for now it is what it is. Next, we got Snow Veil because casting Ice Armor makes us unstoppable and the damage reduction is insane. In our boots, we're doing Orange Herald. This is just to reduce the cooldown of our ultimate because we want to have almost 100% um, cooldown reduction on this. Uh, we got Shredding Blades here for more vulnerable inc increased damage to vulnerable. And then we got Storm Swell in the Amulet for more damage while our armor is activated. And 15% multiplicative more if they are frozen. We don't care about that part because uh, we're not a an ice build. But we get 52% increased damage overall. Multiplicative is just nuts. So let's talk about the other pieces here. Uh, we got Talrashes. You guys are all familiar with that. Um, super strong. And then... Uh, we got uh, Ring of Starless Skies to not only give us increased damage, but uh, the resource cost reduction on ball lighting because it is mana hungry. So now let's talk about the new piece here. We got the Akun's Occultist, which is going to give us the orbit around us and deal damage. Um, and it grants unhindered for long as the field is active, which is super great. But more importantly, we're able to cast this as we move which is very important instead of having to stop every single time we cast. The ball lightnings can be cast while moving under here is super important. I think this really just gives us the edge over the other unique. Uh, next, we got the two pieces that I would probably want to swap out that are interchangeable, possibly. Um, oh, I don't have it on here, but you could do Air of Perdition. So this just gives us a nice 60% increased multiplicative damage buff when we're here. Otherwise, uh, Shaco is perfectly fine here. Next in the chess piece, for a little bit more speed and just kind of a little bit more damage to some degree uh, for speed running, you could definitely do Raiment of the Infinite. However, uh, Shroud of False Death is just incredibly powerful, um, and it's just super strong. I really do enjoy the Shroud over Raiments, um, so, but either one is perfectly fine. And then in the pants, if you don't want Snowville, that's, that's okay. You could swap Snowville down to the boots if you don't want to run Orange Herald. And just do to Balt's Will, especially if you're having issues with your mana. Um, emeralds in the weapons for crit damage. And then, of course, the, um, what is it, the Topaz is for intelligence for more damage. Um, now, the runes that we're running is, of course, Barbarian's Cry. The increase our damage by 50%. Super obvious. That's, it's dumb not to take it. 
Um, and then the next one that we have is Invoke the Necromancer's hor a Horde to Crepify skills, slowing enemies and reducing their damage. And it lets, more importantly, it lets us execute them, so, which is really cool. Um, now, our three occultist gems that we chose is for each aura and hex, we do increase damage, which is great. We got two of them, I believe. And then we got, uh, while we have three or more Psych Witch powers, we get 20% uh, cooldown on our defensive skills, which is huge. And then we got a pull in here with our auras. Because if we go over to our Witch powers, we have Abyssal Resonance, which gives us a nice little explosion and pulling enemies into us because we're going to have the orbs de uh, rotating around us. We got Aura of Misfortune, which gives us that aura. So it gives us the movement speed increase and the enemies slowed. Then we got the Aura of Lament, which is going to do some more increased damage here for us, and it slows enemies again. Um, next, we got the size of our auras are increased, and they take 35% plus more crit strike chance. This one might be one we could actually swap out. Um, then we got Twilight Warding, so we get a barrier, which is really nice. And then our unique witch power of choice is Doom Orb. So it constantly goes around us, and at rank 5, we, it kills or damage the bosses and powers the orb's damage to increase it. So this is what we got, guys. I'm going to go ahead and showcase this a little bit. It's super fun. You just kind of run around, and you just kind of you just seamlessly cast ball lightnings. And you don't do anything else. All right, now, this is Tier 4. My equipment's only Level 4. Um, we do have our Paragon intact. Um, I'm, I didn't really want to talk too much about the Paragon board, but just to kind of showcase, super, super fun. Now, even to, even to do a little bit more, we could go ahead and swap this in. You can see I really don't have any issues with mana, like, at all, which is cool. The build's really fast. It's very seamless, very fun. Just cast stuff. You know, and it's just, uh, it's just really cool. It kind of sucks that they had to change some powers around, but otherwise, like, it seems pretty cool. So, um, then we can go in and we can change our power to the teleport one. So that way we can get the additional pull in just to kind of show the different variants here and then I die. So, yeah, man, still squishy, Sork. Um, the build's just okay, you know, through all the testing. It's super fun. But, again, Sork got punished. Uh, you know, every single season, the Sorceress just keeps getting punished. I, I don't understand why the Kiss, Curse, Curse continues to happen for Sorceress, but it is what it is. Um, overall, our, this is the only build that I actually wanted to test inside of Season uh, 7 PTR because that's the only thing that actually looked exciting. Um, outside of that, man, yeah, a lot of this stuff just seems blah, man. Very just okay. So Sorceress is still super weak, but uh, yeah, we'll see how everything goes, guys. I'm really looking forward to POE 2 on Friday. So like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any questions and all that good stuff, please let me know. And as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.